the evening where the town council would believe that there was a departure from the requirements of clauses one and two shall so state prior to the vote, indicating the substance of the departure that in your judgment has taken place. Mr. Wheatler. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Lambert. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Stanley. Yes, ma'am. Mayor Doty. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Jackson. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Fields. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Gilmer. Yes, ma'am. Mr. Till. I wasn't afraid. Okay. Uh, Mr. Blankenship. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Diane. At this time, if we can all rise for our invocation, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we come to you this evening. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of life that you've bestowed upon our town and our county. We ask that you would continue blessing us, Lord, and lead us and guide us in the direction you would have us to go. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. The Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, and with liberty and justice for all. Any council member have anything to add to the agenda that is currently on the agenda for discussion? Hearing that, is there a motion to approve the agenda as presented? I have a motion. I'll second it. Mary, uh, Deanna's motion, Mary said. All in favor say aye. Aye. For the same sign. We also have received the minutes from our April regular council meeting. Everyone had a chance to review those. Is there a motion to approve the minutes as presented? So moved, Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Brad. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. I didn't hear all of you. Aye. aye. Opposed, same sign. Um, we also have received our accounts payable. Uh, Mr. Blankship, are there any additions to the documents that we received? No, sir. Mr. Gimmer, have you got everything? Yeah, no additions here, Mayor. Okay. I'd like to add one thing, Mayor. Uh, recommendation, if you're ready for that. Is it? For the council pay. We're paying a bill. Is it a bill that you want to add? No. Okay. We'll have to approve the bills and then you can make your recommendation at that point. <coughs> Mr. Gilman? No additions, Mayor. I'll make the motion to approve the April accounts payable. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Lies in your discussion, under discussions, or something you want? There Please. is. Uh, moving forward, Mayor, I'd like to, uh, I have made a motion or whatever needs to be done to let those credit card bills be paid prior to the council meeting to eliminate the interest charge. The interest? Yes. Uh, let's do that second. We can do that. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Mr. Lambert. I'd like to give a recommendation that uh, Beverly be able to pay the uh, credit card balances in full prior to uh, council meeting. To eliminate the interest charges. Yes, sir. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. Aye. Those same sign. I have a the list here for public requests, and I see Bo on here. Uh, Mr. Combs, though you'll be given the opportunity during the public hearing. Uh, I assume you all are here on the zoning. Request that, that was advertised? Yes. Okay. Is there anyone else that needs to speak to council on a public request? <coughs> okay. At this time, I'm going to call a joint public hearing with the Lebanon Town Council and the Lebanon Planning Commission. Mr. Chairman, do you have a quorum? Yes, we do. At this time, Mr. Chairman, I'll 
return the uh, public hearing over to you for consideration of applications. Thank you, sir. Fine, let's begin with the uh, use application for two, please. Okay. Um, an application submitted by Natasha Hughes for conditional use permit to place apartments in the lower level of the building that is located at 459 West Main Street. All adjacent property owners have been notified. Thank you. Is anyone here to speak on the behalf of the application? Natasha is here. Ms. Hughes is here. Okay. I am just planning to um, do apartment style living in the bottom part of the building next door. Okay. Now there were two, I think the reason there were apartments down there, but the time frame had passed, is that right, Kevin? Yes, sir. So that's why we're having to reissue that to you. Possibly. So uh -huh. we have to consider it again. Right. Okay. Planning okay. Commission, have any questions? Thank you. Anyone here to speak in opposition of that application? This time I'll take a motion to approve the application to present. I'll make a motion. Have a second. I'll second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed at the same time. That was done, Mayor. Diane, you read the remainder, please. An application is submitted by Southwest Regional Housing Development Corporation for conditional use for me permit for re residential use the property that is located at 1312 East Main Street. All adjacent property owners have been notified. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this, this, uh, you probably heard earlier, but I think we have two folks here that wish to speak after uh, Keith speaks. Yes, I, I'm going to turn it over to Keith at this time. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, Town Council, and Commission members, I appreciate the time this evening. Uh, and just quickly, the you might want to let everyone know your role, your title, who you know, represent. Sure. And yeah, my name is Keith Byers. I'm Executive Director for the Cumberland Plateau Regional Housing Authority. Uh, the Housing Authority has developed the Title One. The uh, Southwest Regional Housing Development Corporation. And <coughs> for consideration by the Planning Commission and Town Council, we have a conditional use permit for residential use. Uh, Thursday, last week, the Housing Development Corporation acquired the old carriage house property uh, with intent of developing elderly housing. Elderly housing units? Yes. That, and that being 62 plus, okay. uh, as defined. But um, I, I brought just a couple of I may, <clears throat> just for everybody's, I did not bring an easel, but the current, current property of the carriage house, we're looking at developing 17 one bedroom units. We're also looking at developing three commercial spaces. Uh, and I apologize, make sure I give everybody a chance to, uh, to give the three commercial spaces out on the other end. Uh, the initial floor plans, and if I may, uh, and just for the piece, if you don't care, show the pub. Yeah. Uh, what? Where Main Street is on that. Sure. And of course, Main Street being here, additional use permit would authorize uh, commercial, uh, the residential, but again, we're looking at developing three commercial spaces. Uh, and if I may, I'll just, a couple of other renderings to show what, what the properties where it would look like they would be a duplex looking home, but again, two units with one bedroom each. 
and not to the town council. When I look at this picture, will all those units face Main Street and parking be in the back of the exit? What we know is Carriage House now. Is it in, are you going to park the folks in the back of their houses? Yes, that would be correct. Yeah. Uh, the intent would be in front of the council first, and I'll show everybody in attendance. Uh, we would try to develop main green, green space. <coughs> Excuse me here on Main Street, with parking to the rear for the housing. What we would develop, though, would be parking to the, the front of Main Street for the commercial space. How many units are involved? There would be 17 total. This was originally designed, but that's up on top of the hill, and the cost is probably prohibited. So this section would not be developed. But there would be 17 total units. And, and three commercial was for one I didn't understand that. The three commercial spaces. What we hope to do is the town, the three town, but also one of the spaces. One of the spaces will be used for residential services. And one of the units, and I've got a commitment from the workforce development group to help hopefully put in uh, some of their youth programs mm -hmm. with developing youth transitioning into uh, into the market the work work market so what does the existing carriage house play if it was it, it's currently through okay. this whole through this whole okay. section. It, it comes all the way down to the corner here at Puckett Street and almost all the way up to uh, Cedar Creek. Uh, another question I had to uh, I, when I saw these original, when this thing first was discussed, as you know, there's resident, right, bring it back up. Sure. So if you're placing the carriage house, to the very left, we have residential folks. There's an access road up to their residential properties. Correct. Does the does this this project does not inhibit their exit and entrance to their properties? It does there anything no. to change that at all? No, it does not. Okay. Yeah, and you're referring, <coughs> excuse me, to Pocket Street. An existing structure. We have, I think there's a few homes up, you know, access to that property up there. Correct. So, no, that's not alter uh, any access. And I don't know if you had a chance to show the audience a rendering of what they would look like. The second sheet. And uh, I've got a couple, and again, they are renderings. They're early, early drafts of what we're proposing. Uh, again, this being just a simplistic duplex with two units. Now that's facing Main Street, correct? Yes. Yes. That yes. is. This would be. So you'll see the green grass and the sidewalks attaching to the town sidewalk? Correct. Okay. Uh, and again, pushing all the parking to the rear for the residential spaces, right. but keeping the commercial space tied into Main Street. Some of these are kind of just a basic floor plan. Nothing. They're they're almost efficiency type units. Uh, and they're handicap accessible, meet all the federal guidelines. I'm sure that's correct. Yes, sir. we're senior citizens for 62 level, correct? Correct. Right. Yeah. And this is a general rendering of what we first thought about with the commercial spaces, the three commercial spaces. It would be facing the street. Okay. Uh, the commercial space, okay. That's correct. I think. Um, just quickly, the commercial space, roughly seven to eight hundred square foot per per commercial space. And again. Uh, one of the units we think we've identified 
uh, use with workforce development, one of them being with our resident services. Uh, we have been working to develop a lot of partnerships. One thing I hope to bring in is the Appalachian Agency for Senior Citizens. The elderly housing that we're trying to develop with intent of aging in place. So we're trying to pack services, if you will, mm -hmm. into that residential component. The residents could age in place. So uh, the senior citizens have resources through the Appalachian Association of Senior Citizens? Yes. And the services of that kind of thing? And specifically the PACE program. Okay. Uh, and it's our hope that uh, moving forward that we can incorporate also telemedicine. Uh, I do have some commitments with pharmaceutical uh, ETSU to bring in some resources that can help uh, seniors, mm -hmm. specifically with managing medications and those kinds of things. Uh, our agency has also been, excuse me, we've been identified as a resource center through Department of Housing for an Envision Center, which is really to try to help youth build not only character quality, but also workforce development type activity moving into uh, into the workspace. So, so I think there's a lot of energy in building in the services that we want to in addition to providing the service for housing, mm -hmm. but also the potential for commercial space and then have the town tax revenue, okay. those type things. Are these rental, uh, rental property or you buy them? They will be rental and they specifically trying to address low income, low income uh, elderly residents, yes. Senior citizens on fixed income, possibly the elderly. Yes. Uh, 62 plus. 62 plus. Very right. good. Thank you. Mr. Chairman? Planning Commission, any questions? Thank you, Mr. Fryer. Thank you. Anyone else speak in favor of the application? Anyone speaking against the application? Anyone have a question? Let's see what Bo, Bo, Bo. Yeah, I've got questions too after he after he gets here. Sure. Council, thank you for your time. Uh, I'm here rep representing my mom who has property directly behind the carriage house. Uh, one of my main purposes for being here today is is I wanted to see the plan because we've never seen that. I also noticed that Puckett Street, which runs from the old Russell Builders building, comes right by mom, Mom's house and then goes down the side of the carriage house. That's currently <coughs> one way uh, going from uh, west to east. Okay? Uh, on the east side, that's a steep hill. Uh, Right now, she is uh, homebound. That's full-time uh, people that come in to stay with her. Uh, are we planning on abolishing Puckett Street? Uh, and if so, what kind of hardship would that put on us to have to maintain that road, which would now become our driveway, that is also shared with a, another property owner that I'm sure was not notified because that property is not adjacent to the carriage house property. Uh, there are no plans at this point to abandon the street behind the carriage house. Well, according to the plan there, it looked like it did. Well, it shows the existing road, but we know, I mean, we've got to get our, we got to come in there. There's, I'm assuming, Keith, the dumpsters will be on that, on the back side of that property, which means we'll have to, act, have to come through like normal to pick up the trash. With our garbage trucks. Yeah. See, I'm showing this is this is my property here. Yeah. Okay. So this road currently goes all the way down. 
you're showing it as stock. I think that's just showing like green space that's out there. I don't think that's the scale. There's already, if you remember, there's a group, there's a bunch of growth of trees there already. If you go on Pink Street. It, no, it's above, it's above that road though. They've got it down over the road <coughs> against that property and it don't, it's not like that. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. This road, this road would continue straight down through here. Old old the old Cole Russell Builders. Yeah. The road that's there now. Yes. Yeah. But we don't show that road there, which means that our only in and out would be go up this steep hill right here. Yeah. Uh, and that's, I, that's just what I'm concerned about. Now, I don't see our property line's going to go to here, so I don't see you interrupting the road uh, in front of our property. Uh, I was concerned about property value, uh, not having frontage where we once had frontage. And, uh, well, compared to what you've got in front of her now, oh, we, yeah. I believe that'll help you probably. I don't, I, we do <laughs> not object uh, uh, to doing something with the carriage house. Yeah. Not whatsoever. Uh, I'm just concerned about what the overall plan was. Yeah. And, you know, I just wanted to get my... So you're accessing Miss Mom's house. You're coming behind the carriage house. Yes. Right now, so with all that road. Yeah. Is there, are there any other property owners that access their property that Mr. Cox or you, uh, excuse me, Mr. Combs, are you accessing the same road? No, I don't. Uh, I am right here. And I have lots that run down here to meet this property. I've so got you, two lots that I bought that come down here. Okay. Uh, it won't affect me as far as, far as this is. The way it is. Yes, sir. But the way it's grown here and everything, I'm like both. That street's gonna stop right there because it don't show a street here. It shows coming here. Are they still gonna leave that street open? There's been no discussion to close that street by the council. Okay. No. Another thing, <coughs> it shows these here. There's a high wall there. It's not fenced, and that's if I'm not mistaken, that's against the law. That thing is not safe, and you can ask Terry Horn if he's still alive that it's not safe because he went over it. So something has to be done with that highway because these buildings right here will be right under the highway. Well, I'm sure Mr. Byers and the architects and engineers will go back and review that for safety. Uh, okay, you got this up here. Now, does, did did y'all buy this property too? Uh, this is the the actual uh, lot. I think included this section, but this this this, was, this property was bought by other people, wasn't it? Uh, it? It may be this lot. No, this portion. No, that trailer. There's a trailer there. Yeah, there's a trailer there. There's a trailer and stuff that's in there. And we I don't know. The, I think they yeah, own that as well. Huh? I think Hannah owned that as well. She, she did. did. She did. But she, she sold, sold the trailer, and I don't know how much property she sold with it. Yeah. Is that? And the build house share sure and everything. You're going to have to high wall this. Not this too. If uh, you if you build share, sure, you're going to have to high wall this right in here. That that was initial projections that we're we're not developing that. Yeah. It, it was cost prohibitive. Well, there's not going to be building up there. Yeah. Uh, just because of the location. And yeah, my property, like I said, my property here, but it runs down to here. It comes right in here to this. Right. And, and again, we have no intent on disrupting uh, flow. Okay. Uh, and, and again, this is a rendering. It, right. and, it's not the model. And I'm not objecting to the zoning change mm -hmm. whatsoever. Uh, I just. I would like to be more informed about what the future lays in store sure. as regards to our property values and, and the well-being of the mm -hmm. yeah. Mayor, Mr. Byers, can we get the adjacent property owners a copy of the renderings? Well, I, I, I'm I mean, good with that. It's not, that one there is not accurate. I'll take pictures of that when we break yeah. there. And and just, if you could, yeah. you know, maybe meet with Keith. Yeah, you know, like if it's all right with Keith, absolutely, folks. Yeah, 
and get an accurate picture because I'm sure the architects and engineers, unlike them, I, uh, I don't see the road they're talking about near that, that green space is overrun the road that they're talking about, Keith. Yeah, and they, they have uh, the mapping for the town okay. course and the elevations. Yes. But, but uh, I'm well ahead of myself, if you will, that we're not even to that point yet, and we are looking to try to acquire funding to actually build uh, to build the project. Uh, there's probably a 20-foot bank right here uh, that goes down to the carriage house. Is that a town street? Uh, is that a town street? It is street? a town street. It's not a state street, it's a town street. <coughs> and, and matter of fact, if I may, and thank you for bringing that up because a, a point was just made, I want to make sure I clarify. Uh, the three commercial spaces that we would like to develop here are at ground level from Main Street, but we are stacking three uh, one bedroom units on the top which would put the back entrance kind of at ground level to the hill that you're referring to. Okay. Yeah, so that it's not like we would take that grade off. Uh, these back three yeah, would actually be at ground level in the rear, okay. and then the three commercial spaces being at ground level uh, to Main Street. Back here in this back, I'm over it. The entrance, the entrance to those three are going to be on the back street? Correct. Yeah, they would have parking to the rear. Right in front of the Negan's house. Yeah. I'll take the parking lot versus what I'm looking at. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anything else? Uh, yeah, there's one other thing uh, that I'd like to do. Uh, you said it's going to be 62 years or older? Correct. Uh, is this going to be enforced? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. The, uh, the guidelines. Uh, and there. The guidelines, the guidelines, they're supposed to be guidelines and stuff for uh, uh, the ones built out. Fox Nettis. Fox Nettis. And they're not in good time. Uh, we have a lot of, if you'll ask policemen how many times they've been to Fox Business in this last year. I've, uh, I'm acutely aware and I get, I get the police department reports every, every When day. I moved up on that hill, I didn't leave any blocks, I didn't leave nothing. I could leave anything out in the yard, I could leave anything outside, it didn't matter. There wasn't nothing stolen, there wasn't nothing taken, and right now, Everything is double locked, alarm system on the house, and it's still not safe up there because we had a shooting right next door this last week. So this is okay. Thank you, Keith. This is anything further from anyone? <coughs> All right, Mr. Town, I'll take a motion. We approve the application for then. Make a motion based on what they have brought up. Does that need to be addressed first before we? Mayor, if you're we're not came across this kind of situation where yeah. we're looking at something that may be and something that I don't know how we need to word this to make sure that Mr. Rhodes and right. their concerns are, are well met. Legitimate concerns. I think, I think it's good in, in the, I think it's like a, one of the requirements when you issue a conditional use permit. Right. So if you approve the pending one, two, three. Items meet with. I think we would have to say, Kevin, depending upon the, the state and town guidelines for the roads and so forth. Well, I mean, they can't close that road anyway. I mean, that's town the road. So, would that be sufficient, you think, to? I mean, the town. I haven't. I haven't the town council. I've never heard any council member talk roads. about closing that road. Okay. Is that. So you make a motion? I will make a motion to approve it based on the fact that the concerns that they have are, are met. You yeah. know, that the road's not closed. Well, and, and clear enough, to, That's, maybe Bo and, and Mr. Combs can meet with Keith to right. clear, show them that, okay. yeah. an updated version, Keith, showing that road, which is not on there. So they can see that. So they can see it. Yeah. All right.
Do I have a second? I'll make a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay, at this time I'll close the joint public hearing with the town council and the planning commission. Mr. Chairman, I'll call on you again and we'll handle these one at a time. All right, sir. Good. So, this, you have a recommendation for council? Uh, yes, we have a recommendation on Mr. Hughes' application to be approved by the town council. Uh, Mr. Byers' application we request it be approved as well. I do retain a motion, one motion. Let's do Ms. Hughes is first. I'll make a motion there. Is there a second? I'll second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Okay, do, we, uh, do I have a motion regarding the project at the uh, application at the current carriage house? I'll make that motion. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Opposed? <coughs> Mr. Chairman, and on behalf of the council, we wish to thank our planning commission for the services you provide us <coughs> in dealing with matters of property that you all deal with monthly, it seems like here lately. Uh, we appreciate your service and we thank you and uh, Bo and Mr. Collins and Keith, thank you all for being here. <coughs> I would say, Keith, uh, you might want to get a contact info from Mr. Rose and Mr. Collins so you all can communicate. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. Have a good evening. Thank <laughs> you. Okay, next on the agenda is a Miss Jessica Pruitt with the book box. Y'all heard anything, Diane or Kevin? Supposed to be here. Okay. Well, if she shows up late, we'll hear her then. How's that? How are you doing? Okay, at this time, Mr. Lester, you're next up under new business. Adam A. Uh, Lee Jake. So, I see you here, Mr. Ferguson, with you. At this point, we'll turn the floor over to you. Lots of thanks for being with us tonight. Tell them how to do my math. Do my math. Do my math. It helps with the better. Council members, I want to thank you for the opportunity to talk to you. I had a week half met with a couple other council members of the panel meeting. We discussed. You know, the LHA uh, project that we're currently doing in the county. Um, as everyone knows, as the town legend, so is the county currently developed their FY 21 22 budget. And these are a little bit different times, especially coming out of the pandemic or come, trying to come out of the pandemic and, of course, you know, give the services that we need to the Russell County citizens. So as part of our financial planning, the county uh, is currently purchasing a leche slash disposal truck. And this will have a dual purpose. It will, as everyone knows during the pandemic, everybody cleaned out their, their garages. We had an overrun in our sites of trash, but also during our planning, we have also purchased a piece of equipment along with the containers to be able to do a purpose. It will haul the trash during the times that we don't have to haul leche because as a, some of y'all may or may not know, leche is seasonal. It depends upon when it rains. It's, it's usually more heavy during the spring, sometimes during the fall, summer, and then during the fall. So it has its peaks and valleys on volume. So during the meantime, when we're not hauling leche, we will be hauling trash. And of course, we have a, a disposal site in the town of Lebanon. It's one of the nicest ones in the county. And what we are doing uh, right now, what I'm back before the board as a whole, as, as for council's consideration, is 
Currently, we have a gentleman's agreement with the town of Lebanon. We have no formal agreement, no formal contract in place. So, what we are to do, as we're still working through our budget, we're having a reconvened meeting next week with our budget and to be able to finalize our, our county budget in June. So, in the meantime, for this for the council's consideration, I would ask for a formal contract and reconsideration of the treatment cost that the county currently has with us. So uh, that's why I'm here before you tonight, and uh, I'll take any questions that y'all have. I think Brian has given you handouts, the volumes of what we do. We do approximately 2 million gallons with y'all a year. That is the annual average. Currently, y'all charge five cents per gallon. So we have taken over the uh, our contract portion to lower the cost, and we're looking at other components too, as far as the treatment. So that being said, uh, again, <coughs> the council's consideration before you develop your budget, uh, come to an informal agreement with the county on the treatment of lead shake. Can you tell us what you mean when I mean, you said we're looking at other components to handle the lead shake? Can you go into a little bit more depth about that? Right now, the county currently Halls to the town of Levin for treatment. Out of our Lake County land bill, the tune of two, two million plus a year. We also have the dang sewer treatment plant that we currently own. So right now, we can also, you know, treat it at that facility. So we're looking at that. You, you can treat it at that facility today or without upgrade? Our, our facility has been upgraded. At bank? Yes, yes, sir. Uh, we are currently treating it at Dank. We also have the permit in place. We are running tests right now at Dank. We have uh, run, how many gallons? We run 10,000 gallons last week. Yes, so we're already testing both places. Permit, when you say permit, are you talking about BEQ permit? What we're running a test through BEQ. We're yes. running a test run off until July. Yes. So as part of consideration, you know, we're planning as part of the ledge so we're trying to again lower the cost of the county and being able to either, you know work with the town but we also you know looking at our costs and our, our financial planning we got also to have an alternative if something happens to the town to the plant at Lebanon we have to have a backup because one of the things that the UQ will not let us do is have an excuse if you go down we got to have an alternate treatment so again, we're asking for the council to for consideration for a formal agreement and consideration for lowering the cost. Is the the disposal at Dan is it permitted based on so many gallons at this point, like ten thousand a month or something? Is that why that number was? Well, Dan's got a they can discharge so many gallons. I'm sure Lebanon's got the same. I'm not exactly sure, but no matter what they take in, they got like a daily limit. Am I correct mm -hmm. on that? Yes. Our, our dank sewer treatment plant has 125,000 gallon per day capacity. What does that mean in terms of leachate that can be disposed of at that location? Well, they just they, they mix it in with their process with their sewage yeah. and everything. Just, that's right. the total gallons total. Like, right. Well, based know. on 125, what does that mean as far as leachate okay. that can be disposed of if you mix it in or whatever? Our leachate, if we have 125,000 gallon capacity, we currently, on a good day, and that's with the influx, we are probably maybe at 40 to 50 percent of capacity. So, therefore, we can actually run a higher volume. When you mix the leche with the feces, that's that's the process. And I mean, this is not a good conversation to have, but <laughs> it, it actually uh, dilutes it down. Number one. Number two is based off our trip, our test with uh, Draper, Draper, which is our engineers, it's almost tested, and I think y'all have the test results. Sorry, it's almost at groundwater right now. So there's there's not much of an effect on our treatment plant if we do it at the dam. So, so how much leachate can it take? At this point, right now we could take what comes off the volume off the landfill per day easily. Yes. What What do you think, Brian? The maximum loads is what 10,000? I mean, you can see on the chart there. Yeah, that's 10,000. So we're, 
we have 125,000 gallon capacity and we're only running with feces, you know, they're at 40 to 50 percent capacity. So, you know, we're not, we're not even coming to the high part, even with the land. But again, if you remember, leche is not a continuous everyday treatment, the same way it is with the town of Levin. It mixes with your feces at the drop point and it's seasonal, you know, in the spring, some in the summer, and then in the fall. But again, the total aggregate is over right near 2 million gallons per year. Are y'all going to start hauling it yourself? We are. Hauling so already, or is that something to start July 1st? Well, well, the test that we're doing today, we're hauling ourselves. We uh, got to <coughs> using the truck uh, from the PSA right now to do a temporary haul. And then first of the month, I should have my roll-off trucks and the equipment to haul it. So is the goal of the county ultimately to haul it all today if there's a charge at Lebanon? What we're trying to do as a county, as Brian will tell you, we're looking at alternatives on between, we have already bought the dual trucks, we're already in the process. So again, trash and leche. <coughs> of course, it, every time you cram, as, as well as you do in the county, as well as you do in the town, that costs the, the taxpayers. We're trying to find a balance to where the treatment to cop to treat it here versus the tram cost versus the tram cost at Dank versus the tram cost to here. So that's what we're trying to balance. And that's why we're asking for consideration for uh, lowering the treatment cost at the town level. Because right now we can we can treat it at our treatment plant we are right now at the Dank, but it also has additional cost with, with the transportation. That's a longer train time, a longer train time with their equipment, their operators, and their with uh, on a on a per. We can do more tram loads per day coming to Lebanon than we can today because of the train distance. Do you foresee by the end of the next fiscal year that you'll be disposing more at Dane than you will at Lebanon? Will we be the secondary site? It depends on what your cost is. That's, that's, that's just operation. So with the damp uh, plant then, would it be able to handle all your leachate? Yes, ma'am. Is the St. Paul plant in this discussion anywhere or are they are they are they operational yet to handle leachate? The St. Paul plant is right now currently the county has a capacity agreement with one third of the sewer treatment plant in St. Paul. Okay. Now we we have already been working with DQ. We are treating at the Dane Sewer Treatment Plant. Now, again, the county is also into a grant, a DHC grant, to run those 223 personal customers from Dane to the St. The Paul Treatment Plant, which we have a third capacity, which we're paying on as far as the county. Now, if the treatment ends up going to completely at the Dane Sewer Treatment Plant, that treatment plant will be put online with the St. Paul Treatment Plant. We will just hook it up. That's where the line starts and it will continue from the Dane Sewer Treatment Plant to the town of St. Paul. That's the plan right now. That's probably what, two, two three years out? Two years out. Two years. But one of the things that we got to consider is, in the county, sincerely, we've had a great partnership with the town of Lebanon. But one of the things that we're doing, we're having an increase in disposal, which we had to find an alternative for. We've had an increase, of course, in lead chase, so we had to cut our costs. We didn't raise personal property tax. We didn't raise real estate. So therefore, we had, the only way that we can have the same service is to cut costs. So by having a truck with dual purpose, we're able to cut the cost of our contracts, but that was immediately. Okay, the next step, I've got a debt load that goes along with that new St. Truth plant, the Dane Sewer Treatment Plant. So therefore, I've got to look at either the haul or the treatment to make sure that the revenues balances out for the budget. So is the, is the haul roughly, what do you figure, roughly double what it is coming to Lebanon today? Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, it's a little bit longer. I think we could probably haul maybe one extra load. No, yeah. distance-wise, I know it's not. Yeah, it's longer, but when you over a year's time, 
I think if you figure it up, it ain't it ain't that what I'm talking about seven thousand dollars difference a year dollars yeah. today is the biggest difference. You know, you got a little bit of fuel and then the man every time to figure all that. Out. You see, what you got to remember: not one truck is once what we've had set up. Not one truck will be doing the run. The path, the meth, the uh, process that we put in place, we've got three trucks now that can run Leche. We can run Leche. All three trucks are retrofitted with tanks that we'll be able to pull. And we've also are putting additional storage tanks at the, the landfill to be able to pull what we need to pull, not at the, at the uh, weather. As the tanks fell in, one of the things that we have to do is the EQ requires us as tanks fill up, we have to, right now, we have to currently truck them to the town level. Okay, now with our extra capacity with the additional truck and the extra storage containers, one, we can haul at need when we need to. Number two is it also dilutes it down much farther into concentration into groundwater when we do treat. County proposing, and that might be what you meant by hook up from Dank and go straight to St. Paul. Is the county proposing to close the facility at Dank? Uh, no, not yet. It depends upon the cost and the operations. It, it all comes down to what is the best for the county and the cost. That has been discussed. Already. Yes, it has. And then St. Paul, St. Paul's discussions with the county, they were okay with taking the domestic sewage. That's already an agreement that we have. Right. Yes, but we're okay. They're up in the air on taking the leachate? Uh, by the time, it is no really no concern. By the time we treat the leachate at the day sewer treat plant, it goes into their lines, it's groundwater anyway. Only thing it will do is help keep the lines more clean with more volume of water. That's <coughs> if the day treatment plant's over. Mm -hmm. That's if the dank treatment plant stays open. That's if the dank sewer treatment plant So if it's closed, now your now your um, industrial waste to St. Paul's are they I mean, are they okay with that per your old discussion? Um, if we close the dank sewer treatment plant, well, the thing about the dank sewer treatment plant, we just retrofitted it. It's, it was just approved and permitted by the EQ. We uh, we had an up cost. We included a lot of the maintenance and the cost. So right now it's full of operation. And as far as I was said, look at the useful life of a good operation, I would put at least another seven to ten years useful life on the asset. On the dates, the zoo. Mm -hmm. That permit's only good for five years, though, right? Yes. The new permit. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so the applied for grant, Lonzo, what is is that to run a, a pipeline, a sewage pipeline from Dank to St. Paul? Yes, sir. That's the ones you said was a two-year plus project. It is a two-year two in two years. It's the being a two point five million dollar project. It's a fully grant, but part of the We need to So I guess my question is, is, why would the county use a tax dollar grant to run a pipeline from Dank to St. Paul if they're going to leave the Dank Sewer Street plant open? Well. After right now, currently we have 5.5 years remaining on the debt load. We have right now, based off of what we're treating, we make the revenues on that right now for the treatment. But the problem is this: right now we're only running 40 to 50 percent capacity. So this will give it an alternative use, and also to offset the debt load. Okay, I've got two more questions. Uh, you're talking about leachate being seasonal. And just so I can clarify, it's not really seasonal. There's times that it's heavier than others, but it constantly flows. Because on average, I think we did the, we did the numbers roughly 7,200 gallons a week a day. Is that correct, Chris? It is. So that's, I mean, you're talking 7,200 gallons a day that we put into our septic system here to be treated. Over an average of the year. It would probably come out today. I think that's what we did as average over the year, but obviously during January, February, March, April, it's, it's heavy due to, due to precipitation. I just want to make sure the council understood it's not seasonal, it's just heavier and 
more, per, more of a precipitation yeah. than others. Right. Uh, but, uh, yes, but one thing you must remember is with our extra capacity of storage, that that 72 will be at our wheel. Sure. You'll see what I'm saying. We between the trucks and this, we're you can look at what's the capacity on the containers of our storage ground now. <coughs> 25,000 gallons, 50,000 gallons that we can maintain. So, Lonzo, at the beginning of the discussion tonight, you mentioned about, uh, and I remember the agreement, it wasn't necessarily a handshake, it was a letter. Back back in, <laughs> that's way before all of us. Well, back in the late, well, I was around, so okay. back in the late 1990s. Uh, but you're, and I understand, the board is kind of one. If I understand, your board is one of formal agreement mm -hmm. for, for, budget plan. for budget and so they'll know uh, what they're paying for the So, we're currently at five cents. That is correct. Yeah. That is correct. When you say a formal agreement, do you have a figure that you wish to talk to the town about consider? Well, be prior to the council, you know, again, like Brian and I have stated right now, we're still running through the test. I, I will not state any, you know, I mean, as far as cost, to be true to the cost, because we're trying to work with mm -hmm. either, you know, the St. Paul Project or, or the Town of Levin, we still have a little bit more of analysis to do with okay. the uh, just to be fair. Right. Not, so you're not necessarily here. ready to sign an agreement? Not yet. Or to propose a fee? Either. Not yet. Until we get a little bit more testing done. Uh, we're here to ask for consideration, put it into your planning for a formal agreement, and look at it based off of your budget because you have to plan the same way we That's do. Right. You have June 30th coming at you the same way we do. So we're coming down to the line in the last seven weeks here. So in okay. our budget, we have right now scheduled by the 1st of June. So we're, we're moving on these targets. But uh, but you're not ready to get, you're not ready to talk about the percent gap yet. Not yet. Okay. No. Well, I'm, I mean, I don't know how that's been, but me personally, I don't think we need, I'm, I'm not for cutting it any, I think we need five cents. And I don't think we're making any, breaking even at that. Okay. I mean, that's just my opinion. But Mr. Dirty, if we wanted to, I mean, to have that agreement with the county, Mm -hmm. That's something that we could get to them. You know, I think it's going to be cooperative. It's just like, it's going to have to, Mr. Taylor had me out, I'm suspecting that the agreement will originate from the county to us. Is that correct? No, I think so. So, yes, to answer your question, it have to be, <coughs> it appears to me your board will have to oh, approve man. the agreement. Yeah. Just like this governing body would have to approve it. Absolutely. So it wouldn't be us? Delivering a, an agreement since we're giving the service. That's what I'm asking. It could be either way or no. Well, if you tell me the, what's the best way. Well, I mean, you can op I guess you're operating under a operator. Uh, you know, specified manner right now. And if the county's asking to change that, you need to know exactly how they're asking to change it. So, so actually, I mean, if you, it's you have the specifics of what you want changed, then Either, either side can actually prepare a final agreement. Okay. But, you need but we originated the original fee. Yeah. We sent, there was a letter that was sent from here to the yeah. county administrator. I, so to answer your question, I think it's a joint effort. Yeah. Okay? Is there any idea when the Q test results will be back? Uh, the testing right now, they're, they're doing weekly tests and we have to keep up all the data. We taste test the first load every day uh, as far as conductivity and pH and course load. And uh, we'll go to July and then we'll review it and then go from the next. So could we, could we not just uphold what we've got going on now in July or August? Y'all come back and we touch base again? We could. Yeah, Is that okay? We to ask? I think we need to do that anyway because uh, as you said, you're, we're, in the, we're in the same boat you are as a board and as an administrator. Matter of fact, we're right in the middle of our budget as well. And obviously, uh, we're not going to run out of our way to reduce, to reduce revenue to the town for our operations. It's 
kind of like what Noel was saying a minute ago. Uh, Chris and Chris back there had been talking to Kevin and our operators. Uh, they have the knowledge of what it's costing us. And I haven't yet seen where we're making money on this. Uh, unless Chris and Chris tell me different from that. It's kind of it's just it's kind of a little quagmire for all of us, you know. So, Mayor, um, if I may, Monzo, would it be? Are you thinking of maybe doing an annual agreement that renews every year that both of us can get out of it, like ninety day notice, kind of like with our other waste management agreements that we have? Well, and my legal counsel will tell you, and, and as far as our contracts and agreement, we do like three year contracts with one year interim. That way it could be. Right. That's just. That's what you realize our three with one year renewals? Well, yes, with one year renewals and negotiation up on the department. Okay. Yeah. Brown, do you have your uh, waste manager's license to the state? I've got my to run the solid waste. Okay. On that end. Do we have. There has to be plans and designs <coughs> on the HA and the landfill. Can we get a copy of that to review? Well, as far as the heat so in 95, we closed the landfills. Yep. These are closed landfills. I need to through the close. All we got to do is collect the leach and take it to a wastewater treatment plant. As far as that, only time we have to test the leach is at the request of the wastewater treatment plant. And I think we've done two tests, 16 and 20, and that was just as far as us. And, you know, I started five years ago, so a lot of this is new to me and I'm learning as I go. But uh, as far as DQ, they've never asked. All I got to do is provide them records, that spreadsheet. That's what I provide them. Mm -hmm. How their daily flow, or to collect, make sure we're collecting it. They come inspect the landfill, make sure there's no seepages or anything like that. I'm gonna back up a little bit, Lonzo. But you're talking about the date. You mentioned the St. Paul project, which is that pipeline, correct? Okay, you were talking about the dates running roughly 40 to 50 percent, which is roughly right. 45 to 60,000 gallons a day. We have 125,000 gallons a day capacity. But you're only running 40 percent. Yes. Okay, so recommended with a biological wastewater treatment plant. How much leachate can you take on percentage-wise? That, that's kind of that's kind of one of the Chris Pritt and I have talked about percentage of leachate versus what you're diluting it with. Because right. obviously the concentration is going to be higher if you have less. I know. Well, and you're, you're trying to think from the perspective that we're bringing in 7,500 gallons and putting it in with the 40%, right? We have an alternate tank that we can release at will. We don't have to dump 7,500 gallons. We can set and implement it into the other tanks. We have three containers there that we can set and operate <coughs> at any time, plus the extra storage capacity. But eventually, that storage capacity, you're going to run out because it's <coughs> an average of 7,200 gallons a day. Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? So I am. But we're still treating this. I mean, we can treat on a day to day basis. But is, what's the percentage of leachate versus regular wastewater? But what you got to remember also is the concentration of the leachate. What it, what our engineers are telling us, our Roman Gerber, is that it is groundwater content, very high, you know, very trace amount of you know of anything that's above groundwater. So they're saying that's irrelevant. So, so that's irrelevant when you. Okay, that. that was my question. Are they saying the leachate that Currently, all irrelevant to the concentration. Right, shine, yes, okay. It's not, it doesn't need a mixture. Mayor, I've, you know, I've, I've probably heard more on this than the most of the council. I understand if the council wants to take more time uh, to get information. But I've, you know, I was in that meeting with Lonzo and Brian Fryer, and after speaking uh, to our operations uh, superintendent, uh, I agree with Mr. Fields that keeping it at five cents at least for one year uh, would be my suggestion to the council. I appreciate Lonzo and Brian coming. I understand their position. Anything else? Are there any more questions? Lonzo, thanks. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
our senior graduation of <coughs> yard signs. Uh, can we pick that up just a little while? Can we? Can we be sure that? Sure. Uh, I got a hold of Preston. Yeah, when we take a break, I think I'll have you know, the dining and print us all out. The price. 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 The uh, we'll take a few minutes, uh, prepare a few minute break at this point so we can talk to Preston. Okay. Be back with you shortly, folks. Okay. Item C uh, is to begin our discussions on the implementation of the cigarette tax. You all know Monday night, this past week ago tonight, Russ County Board of Supervisors passed their ordinance implementing the cigarette tax. Uh, they can't, as, uh, as in meals and lodging, the town has the tax in place. They will not be able to come within the town to collect that tax, so there won't be, for lack of a better term, it's not double taxation on the cigarette tax. So, I know, Kevin, I'm going, I know you collected a lot of data here. It was in our agenda packet. I read the county's mm -hmm. resolution, their ordinance. You know, if we decide to go forward, Richlands is a head in place. Matter of fact, I think we may be one of the few localities on this side of the map that couldn't have a secret tax. I understand. And uh, I, I don't know. If the council wishes to move forward, we can talk to Kevin, but we've, uh, we've got two examples of an ordinance. If we choose to move forward, then hopefully Kevin won't have to reinvent the wheel. He could just take them and modify them to meet the town. Uh, but before we get into that, uh, I'm interested in hearing comments uh, from the governing body. So. Uh, I'm going to start with Scott. You go. Sure. So, Mayor, I understand once the county um, adopted this cigarette tax that they are able to claim that tax in the town of Levin at the rate that they approved, correct? As it exists right now. As it now. exists. So, the town residents are going to pay that tax at a minimum. Uh, not necessarily the minimum, but they're going to pay that tax or a tax regardless. So, uh, for us to adopt something similar or the same similar ordinance within the town, uh, we would be able to set our own rate and we have jurisdiction over the town that they wouldn't be able to tax within the town. That's correct. Okay. To me, Mayor, I mean, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not for increasing tax. Uh, having an increased tax burden on our citizens. <coughs> but to me, the decision's already been made. Uh, once the county does that, uh, you know, my suggestion would be to follow suit at the same rate uh, and have our legal counsel draw up uh, the documents. Okay. Well, same way. I think we need to go by their same policy and adopt it in time. Okay. Deanna? I guess I wasn't here when it was discussed if it was discussed. This is it. It's it. Okay, I read it and. Karen's already done it. Yeah. Ms. Stanley? Well, I stopped charging. Um, and to follow up with what Scott said, is that this is something the county has already passed and our residents are going to be paying it. And I am sure that our residents would like to see that money being used in Lebanon. In Lebanon for their citizens, for, for programs, for the upkeep of the town. So that would be why I would Pursue. support a yep Fred? I do feel like we need to have the tax, and it's already set. The precedent's already set for us. I feel that if we raised the rate, the only problem I have is discouraging young smokers, young smokers, children, 
And if we raise debt, that might discourage them. But I also hate to raise it and run people out of town also. True. So I'm happy with Just keep it. I'm safe. happy I'm happy with following the suit also. Uh, Mr. Witt, Mr. Elijah. I agree with uh, the Scott Mary mayor, the, the town kind of, I mean the county set the precedent. It's either it's either we tax it in town and receive the benefit of the tax or we give it to the county and being elected to represent the town and its citizens. I think we're only being wise to capture that income here and use it to the benefit of their good. Um, but also, just unlike Scott, I'm not a fan of increasing or uh, you know proposing new taxes on citizens. But the president's, totally the, the president's yeah. been set, so at 25 cents a pack, I don't think there's I don't think there's really much of a option as far as can we go lower and bring more business into the town because we're yeah. The amount of money it's going to take to uh, for the stamp and the administrative the administrative costs, it's mm -hmm. not going to be worth trying to do that. True. If they were 40 cents or higher, we could probably do that. But Adjust. I think mm -hmm. with what we're at, I think we need to stay with exactly what the county's mm -hmm. at and move forward. And I sort of think it's a good start for them. We can just get it year to year. Uh, Kevin, now, I've been reading, uh, this is the dangerous part of my understanding here. Uh, so, if we move forward with this and we uh, we pass it, when Kevin gets us an ordinance, the responsibility we'll have to have somebody in house to deal with the distributors, buying the stamps to get a uh, uh, sale to the distributors, and then our local law enforcement does periodic checks to, to all the cigarette locations to see that in fact. Those stamps are on there. Yes. And you've got some role here. What's your role in that? Well, basically, I'd oversee her and be the ultimate responsible, you know, for That's it. good. You're the ultimate <laughs> responsible. <laughs> yeah. That's, what, that's uh, what I want to hear you say. Mayor, <laughs> is, there a, um, is there an agency where we can find out exactly how much is sold within town so that way we can plan accordingly with the budget? Uh, I know that we talked to other localities about their revenue. But is there any agency, or can we maybe have Kevin try to figure that out if there's someone that we can contact and get an idea of what amount or quantity of cigarettes is sold in the town of Lebanon so that way we can uh, add that. Uh, if it is proposed and add, uh, approved, mm -hmm. uh, I'd like to know what we're looking at from uh, potential revenue uh, to add that to the uh, proposed budget as well. Sure. Does they have stamp ever pay? Ever pay. Mm -hmm. So they have to open every cart when it's stamped. They stamped them before they put them in the cart. The distributor. Mm -hmm. It's on them. Yeah. It's on them. Like, it's on the distributors. It's their responsibility. Like, uh, the Are they around with all of them or the store? Yeah. The, yeah. Every, every uh, business that is selling cigarettes will have to buy stamps. They have to open every cart and stamp them for sale. Well, they would, they would actually, the distributor would actually do that. They so would when they would receive them from her. Virginia wholesale, they got to do it. Yeah, yeah, every every business, yeah, in, in the town. It's yeah. the same as they do. If you look on the bottom of the back, there's already a Virginia stamp on there that they're getting. So, but time, uh, I'm thinking now, Kevin. If I understood, this goes into effect when the county July one. Okay, is my understanding. So, at, at a minimum, I hope tonight, and what I'm hearing. I think we probably need to pass a motion to authorize Mr. Taylor to develop an ordinance for us to pass uh, for the council to consider. Uh, I'm going to ask council, I know we've talked about the possibility of a, I think Scott has mentioned earlier, we may have a, a budget committee meeting two weeks from tonight, which would be the 24th. If council would be willing, I'd like to to allow us time to get ready. Is who's do you have somebody in house that you're thinking about to oversee and work with this? Yeah, I think it would be really good for Chance for okay. her to do that uh, because we also need to do reporting. Yes. Uh, so uh, you remember when we did the interview and so forth? She loves spreadsheets and reports, yeah. so we're just going to let her just love on. <laughs> 
So I guess what I'm saying is, uh, if we're going to be, uh, I mean, I, if we're going to do this, I'd like for it to go on effect July 1 for budgetary purposes. Yes. Okay? Okay. So that's why I'm, I'm, will, I'm wondering if council will be willing to have a continued council meeting on the 24th to review the ordinance and to make a decision moving forward instead of waiting. I don't I, I really think we're pushing us getting ready to do this by July 1 if we wait till June the 14th. You know, am I making sense? I would recommend that, Mayor. One reason is because we can we can try to figure out some information on what the administrative cost of the stamps will yeah. be compared to the rate. Yeah, and I'm going to bet, Kevin, aren't they, uh, will the distributors, it's kind of like meals and lodging, will they get a, some kind of fee for Collect, uh, doing, who gets the a fee for collecting that tax? Oh, I was noticing here in Richlands, they had a, in their ordinance, they had a, um, let's see here. They were entitled to, In the sale of such stamps to a local dealer or other agent, the trader shall allow a discount of 0 .006 of a cent per stamp. For the face value thereof to cover the cost of these concurred by the dealer or agent fixing the stamps. Okay, that's what I was wondering. That was in there. Yeah. That's, yeah. Now, Rexford right County is in there as well, so well, page three. So they do like a 10 cent, one tenth. The town actually, I think, pays for the stamps. Yes. But the um, <coughs> you're basically helping them recoup their cost and sticking the same to the back. That's right. Gotcha. Yeah, it's, and they've got a tenth of it now. I guess that's whatever you all would suggest. Could the uh, could I get a motion to authorize our town attorney to prepare an ordinance? for the implementation of the cigarette tax in Lebanon. So moved. I'll second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Those the same sign. Kevin, Here. there's one other thing you mentioned. I, you maybe mentioned me earlier. I'm assuming that we're going to have to have a public hearing on this or do we? I haven't found, I mean, I've, I've looked at it two or three times. I haven't found where there's a requirement for a separate public hearing for this. Um, I mean, if you ordinarily have to have a public hearing before enacting the tax, yes, you would. But as far as for this particular tax specifically, yes. I haven't found a code section that says you have to okay. have one. But, you know, if there's a general code section that says before you impose a new tax, you have to have a public hearing. Yeah, obviously you would. I think it wouldn't be a bad idea to have it just because, you know, just keep the public informed of what you're doing and why. Because, you know, if you just have in the newspaper, you know, town council passes cigarette tax, I mean, it's going to be a lot more <coughs> yeah. if you let people come in and explain to them, you know, all we're asking for is what you're going to be paying anyway. Well, uh, I noticed, the reason I ask it, I noticed the county had one. Well, the county has to be for any ordinance. Okay. Right. Yeah. Well, should, I mean, would it, do you, are you good to have an ordinance? Or you be able to meet on the 24th, two weeks from tonight? As far as I know. Would it be, would it be appropriate to schedule a public hearing for that night? Uh, when's your budget here? That night. No, that's just a work session. The budget hearing won't be till the middle of June, which is going to make it rough mm -hmm. to get ready. I mean, you, if you want, I mean, basically the public. See, they had a public hearing, and then that night they passed it last week. It was, had a public hearing, then voted on it. Kevin, with that mills and lodging, we had to, we couldn't just, have a public hearing and then the next two weeks or whatever implement it. We had to wait like almost a quarter. Do we do? I mean, why do we have to wait? Is that on our own? I don't know. Is that just to make for county purposes we started on a quarter or something? Uh, I don't know. All right. Did we vote, by the way? Okay. okay. 
We got a motion and a second to authorize the town attorney to develop an ordinance for cigarette tax. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. And you want me to use the same numbers as the county? Yes, same. One point one cent or whatever it's point one two five or whatever you write it. And you'll need to put different names in there. I understand. Okay. That is cigarettes only, correct? Filtered cigarettes? Yes. Did you want to say anything, Jeff? No. I'm good. Right now, there's no tax for, in the state of Virginia, you can't tax vape right yeah, now, Yeah, right? Virginia taxes at 6.6 .6 milliliters. Okay. Per 6.6 .6 cents per milliliter. What, what happened to the county last week? They didn't include it. They so didn't include vapor or, or um, Gold or anything like that. It's just cigarettes. Cigarettes only. And it's like what, 1.2 cents? 1.25. Per, yeah, per cigarette. Yeah. Per cigarette. Like, what, 25 per cents a car? I mean, pay. All right. Deanna, are you ready to talk about senior yard signs or not? Uh, Fred, who I've got some coffee. Did you come down to my I just came. Okay. Um, I looked at him. I really didn't like him. <laughs> okay. Um, I'll let Deanna talk more about it. Like We've just been trying to come to a some kind of a consensus to come up with something we can do for our seniors. Um, we were initially approached to do the banners, and the cheapest banner cost I can find was thirty six dollars. And we didn't do those last year. We didn't do those last year. Uh, 36 by 116 is $4,176. Uh, and then these are examples of yard signs that Preston Ball could have made. And I believe they were, how much were they? $12. $12. Does that have a picture of them? Of these and that would be right around no. $1,400. There's, a, uh, there's 116 seniors, and I said something about doing extra ones so we could put them out yeah. in the town. It would be like $1,500. But, and then we got a quote of I'll pass down the examples of the yard signs. Well, we're still in a COVID year. It's, uh, we're getting there. <laughs> Maybe this time next year things will return to normal in a normal state of operation. Uh, I know the school, I already know the school is not doing the banners. Uh, so it's then, I'll just, I'll leave it. Parks and Rec Committee Chair. Well, I, to, I mean, I I like giving the, the seniors a token of, of from the town to say that we're proud of them and kind of a congratulations. Mm -hmm. You know, because this year has been hard. Um, I mean, I, I think it's a nice 
memento, it's a nice gift, you know, to have um, the yard sign from the town, it's a nice gesture. I mean, that's my opinion. Um, and, and I do know that not all of our seniors live in the town limits, um, but I think they all need to know that we're proud of them. Support. We support them in, in what their future members are. Well, uh, we're saying that last year was worse. These have been going through the same thing and it will be still going. The COVID will still be uh, mm -hmm. going when they graduate. So yeah. their year has been as bad as last year's seniors. I don't think there's any either. difference in the, no. and, uh, they, 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 the years they've had. They didn't have graduation this year yeah, with, yeah. The, with right. restrictions. But Mayor, I agree with the end. We need to. I'd like to do something. Um, I actually was had three seniors that, that work at Walgreens, and they were the, under the impression we were going to discuss the large hanging banners tonight. <clears throat> and I revisited my agenda to make sure that we wasn't. Um, I think they were more receptive after getting feedback from them. Um, they had mentioned maybe putting up a sign somewhere, uh, not necessarily yard signs, but um, you know I know that not every senior lives in the town of town of Lebanon, but I think regardless if we do yard signs or not, I think some of this, I mean a sign like this on the middle school lawn where we had our bicentennial right there essentially in town, I think that would be nice. Well, uh, regardless we do, if we do the can we do a sign cross main street? Mm -hmm. Or uh, yes, yeah, across Main Street. Do, I think yes. across Main Street would be would be great. That'd we probably be better than the one on, on I mean, the I love the I love the colors. I love the detail. I mean, if we can do something like this across Main Street, and can we leave the year off of it? She wants both. She wants. Well, what I was going to do is okay. get extra that they could put up on like their left side, put up one coming into town and one here, one down in front of their community building, throughout the town, just the yard side. Like yeah. this, but like not one for every senior. Yeah, and one for every senior too, but I mean, get extra so we can put them out throughout the Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's what you said. You, well, you, you were going to get 125 rather than 116, yeah. so we can put them through town. I'm going to encourage you to make a motion. Okay. What's the price quote again? The, the one of the quotes was 1658.75. Uh, and I think uh, Preston's comes down to 1500. Could he use this side? Can you use that side? Could Preston leave this side? I think if well, Preston was at 12, if Preston was at 12, I think he could take that design and make it. it says that That's what I'm saying. I don't like those that he said you. I'm in favor of the sign across Main Street in all seriousness. I think that's a really nice gesture. My only issue with the yard signs are if, they're, if they don't have their portrait on them, they're not as personable. But if the council's going to move on doing something for the seniors, I think we should do something a little more personal, just like the banner across Main Street, maybe even having some type of a congratulation event at the pool or the pool party or something like that. For the amount of money we're going to spend on yard signs, we can probably feed them and actually be able to communicate with them and talk to them and tell me really we congratulate them instead of just putting a sign in the yard. That's, but that's my opinion. I agree with Elijah. I'd like to do one or the other, and I think either this you know, sign across the road or signs throughout town would be more appropriate, but that's just that's just me. I mean Well I was just saying that my thought is that they would have something to have as each person to have themselves. And last year, I mean some of them said they live out of town that I mean it's just for them personally. It's not 
for them because they're in town or anything, but if they have personally, like Jacob, his, they live out of town. Theirs was up, and I saw several out of town oh, yeah. that didn't live in town. Just because they don't live in town doesn't mean they wouldn't appreciate it. I, I'm going to make a motion that we get Preston at $12 for 125 and do this one. This one, yeah. Yeah, I like that He's just going to have to change it a little bit. Yeah, they'll have to change it. So, I guess they're not copyright there. Mm -hmm. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to so deal with the local uh, vendor. Is there any further discussion? So this is just for yard signs only? Correct. That's $12 at $125 is $1,500. $1,500. Any further discussion? All in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All opposed? No. No. 4 2. Motion passes. Now, do we need to make our motion ready to do the big manners now? Oh, no. I like. I would like to make a motion to go to ask um, Coonies to make a, a sign like this or something. Main Street. To go over Main Street. So motion. What? Yeah. That's a different yeah. person doing it. So. Well, I mean, Cooney makes the big signs. Yeah, I know, but what I'm saying, it would have to be a different motion because this is the different person. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is your motion to approve? I thought I just asked, was it for one or the other? It was, it was just for the yard signs. It was just for the yard signs. Mary wants me to contact Cooney to do the banner across Main Street. And then you better get. And I'm sure, let me ask you this, Mary. Is that something, the one on Main Street, could we not put the year on that and just congratulate the graduating class? Mm -hmm. So we can you use it every year? year? I liked that minute ago when I said that. <laughs> that's such a good idea, Mr. Daddy. <laughs> 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 I think Cooney can put the year on it, too. And, 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 and it can and change every year, just like we do with the Fourth of yeah. July. You need the year on there. Yeah. Yeah. If, it, if it's like sure it passes, you need the year on there. Somebody make a motion for we'll move it on. No, I didn't get good news. Diane, Diane, did Mary make a motion regarding the banner? I think she did. You told her to say that? I did you not. You did. Is there a second? To the, the motion for the banner and cross Main Street. Is there a second? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
That's all I have, Mayor. You know what? <coughs> you did that on purpose, did you? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Okay, Chief. Uh, You're yes. Up. yes, sir. Uh, and I'll just pop it real quick, too, just to give you uh, we served uh, 40 total summonses for the month of April, uh, had 24 total arrests, responded to eight crashes, um, 33 assist motorists, patrolled 11,478 miles, and responded to 421 total calls for service. Um, had a, a uh, Operation with the DTF that actually went down at the uh, in, in town, come in and we were able to get a pretty high price target we were looking for on that. So uh, the indictments are still sealed, but just so you know, they, there is a pretty good target that we've been looking for was we were able to get. With the tobacco firearms, what's that? The DTF, the drug task force. Drug task force, yeah. okay. So that was good. It was a bust of, of, of several fentanyl packets, hydrocodone, Zortac. Good. So that so that was good. He was also successful on two other purchases, and uh, we uh, pulled him off of the actual detail for a while. He, he conducted quite a bit of surveillance on a on another target that we had talked mm -hmm. about with the assistance of the state police surveillance van. So uh, he was pretty pretty busy to speak with that. But his numbers was down, and if you looked at his report, his numbers were down. It's because he several days was just surveillance for him. Sure. But he did well. Uh, SeaTac took in seven total transfers, and uh, we were able to use uh, Chris Neat for two additional calls to help us to cut down a little overtime on that. Um, also, uh, I've talked to Mr. Blankenship about this, and he's probably made you aware, but I did apply for a body camera grant from DCJS, and I was made aware uh, that we did receive that. So we'll get money to get, uh, I, I put in enough for the grant to get. To make sure 13 body cameras and a storage system, which is our problem now is we have nowhere to store all our footage. And the ones we have are really going down again. So right. hopefully those will all be replaced by the end of this month. Good. So um, that's about it. Uh, of course, if anybody has any questions, we can answer on the incident this weekend. You might want to update us on what happened this weekend. Okay, uh, Saturday, uh, right before three o'clock, Officers uh, Sergeant Vice and Matt Hurd responded to a call on Dodge Street of a report of uh, a hysterical woman called and reported someone had been shot. Upon arrival, they did find a victim that had been shot in the upper torso. Uh, shooter was gone. When they got there, within about 15 minutes, uh, they had located him and taken him into custody without incident. He surrendered. Um, Myself, uh, we called in state police, called in the Los Sheriff's Office, and Zach Stoops come out and help us. We all kind of got together. The problem was, was he when he ran, he ditched the gun. We couldn't find the gun. After about three hours, we were able to locate the gun uh, with the help of a VSP canine. We found him in ten minutes after getting there. <laughs> but uh, so so we got the gun. We did charge a 19-year-old Jonathan Roden from Dodge Street. Uh, we did charge him with aggravated malicious wounding. The, the, the victim is alive, or was alive this morning, uh, but not looking good. So. Well, we appreciate your guys and you and your service yeah. on working that. That's a difficult thing to hear in the town our size, but it seems to be going on all around us. Uh, yeah, here. Sure you know? I, I, I had to, I don't know why, why I did, but uh, I actually watched the body camera footage of James Lane in Norton, the chief in Norton. Yeah. It, it was rough. Yeah. It's getting crazier right there. It is rare. Mayor and Council, is it appropriate for Chief Deskins maybe to make some house calls in that area just to let them know that everything's you know, it was just an isolated domestic issue or family issue and uh, maybe make some house calls to make some of these residents. We can I actually support. spoke to uh, I forget his name now. Archie. 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 I actually spoke to him a couple of times. You know, so yeah, we can we can do that tomorrow. I can make some calls and let people know that we're good and that everything's hopefully in isolated incident. Yeah, I've got a lot of questions that I don't have answers to and right. really would rather not. Right. I'd rather defer to you guys. Can you try to order door first and then get them in the home or something call? Does Joe Mark just let them know what's going on? Yeah. We just go on the scene. Yeah. 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 
Yeah, yeah absolutely. We can do that. We can do some different at home. Yeah. yeah, we can do that. Our officer at the academy, he's graduates this month. Graduates is he, well, is he going to graduate this month? He graduates May 21st. Um, I did call, uh, some of the council members had asked me to call and see if they could attend. Uh, they aren't having a public ceremony. They're just going to do in-house. But I would like to, typically, when they come back, what's happened in the past is, is they just, they do their oath, their, their uh, code of ethics. I would like to ask if you, if you guys would allow me to bring you to the council and do that with him in front of the council. That'd be great. Uh, on the 21st. Well, I, we forward. can do it on the next council meeting, the, the June council meeting, uh, just really? to do something for him. How long of an event is that to do? Two, two minutes. It's so we're we're heading to meet. Looks like we're going to be meeting on the 24th. Okay. I'll be out of town the 24th, Mayor. Who's that? You're making a bad mistake. <laughs> That's all right. You trust us, don't you? You got a little conundrum on this He did pass his driving week last week. He's good. Uh, he, he passed that pretty well. So this only hurdle from now to the 21st, I believe, will be the state test. So we'll look. We'll look for the to the June meeting to ask him to come. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anything else for the chief? Mr. Taylor. Uh, Mr. Blankenship and I went to court this past month with the uh, nuisance case out here at BAM. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think we are probably on track to get that situation straightened out. Uh, one of the owners appeared in court and Mr. Blankenship okay. gave him a detailed list of what he needed. I think he indicated it'd be complied with what about when Kevin. Uh, 30 days, I think is what it was, and of course I know he's already been out there oh, yeah. working, of course, uh, just talking to him, uh, he was very kind and uh, ready to clean it up and so forth, so, but I have already seen him out there working and doing it, so, it's already started. That's all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, uh, committee reports, uh, I will start with Mary. Um, yes, uh, banners have been ordered. They received the check. Um, they will have um, the Cedar Fest here prior to June 1st, so we can hang them on June 1st. Um, he did ask for one of our banners to just for, for measurements and to make sure it's, um, everything is the same. The only difference is that they were a hair short, uh, an extra inch and five eighths, and so he said he'd take care of that. Um, so that's on track. The only other two things I would ask um, for the council to consider is, um, well, the one thing is recognizing the wrestling team, though, that went to state, as we did in years past. Mm -hmm. um, they were just recognized by the school board, and if maybe they could be recognized or at least invited to the June meeting um, for that recognition. Um, and then um, Kevin did provide me with an update on um, Point Broadband, um, what their quote would be for us. He is waiting um, on Chantel to come. Uh, he's going to contact them you know, earlier than this week asking for um, an updated quote to provide um, the service to the town, and then maybe we can move forward. Okay. Good day. Ms. Deanna, do you have anything else tonight? No, I can prove everything. Okay. Brad, do you have anything tonight? No, sir. Elijah, streets? Uh, we were down about $34,000 on, uh, on total expenditure for street department mayor uh, due to labor, uh, being used elsewhere, water leaks, things like that. But I will say that uh, water loss was down 12 percent, so it went from 32 to 20. So I'm okay with that because there's other places I can spend street money before July 1st uh, to make up for that. But uh, just let the water and sewage department know that we appreciate the, the work on the lease. I sure like that 20 percent number way better than 32. Um, but other than that, Mayor, I think everything's going just plain. Clatterbuck's still in the process of uh, working on downtown area with what we approved. And um, I foresee us, you know, exhaust all funds before July 1st with 
the State Street. Good deal. See, Doyle, we're going into closed session regarding personnel. Uh, Scott, do you have anything at this time, or do you wish to wait till later, or what? Um, I'll just say that plan on meeting possibly on the 24th, if the majority of the council can be here. That's one of the very few days that I have available. Um, I'll be glad to get with Elijah afterwards when he gets back in town. And Are you gone all week, Elijah? I'll be gone from the 23rd to the 27th. Back the only other date maybe I have available is the 20th, but we'll look at that maybe when I have time to uh, check my schedule here just shortly. Uh, maybe after closed session, but, you know, determine on when we can get the majority of the council here. Okay. Uh, at your seat, I asked Kevin to provide a, um, a water sewer garbage rate proposal. This is what um, I had talked about that I'd like to propose for uh, the budget. For this coming fiscal year, this one. Right, this one. Yep. It shows we'd ask Kevin to prepare a document um, that she should. Oh, there's one more point there. Yeah. Is everyone got time to shoot? I hope so. Am I the only one with Kevin? Does everybody have a copy of this or just me? I just gave yours. I found it. Okay. Never mind. Did you know? This is this is one. This is my no, 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 get. This is my get. I'll get Kevin to email this out to the rest of the council. It just shows the impact of rate changes on water and sewer uh, for the upcoming fiscal year uh, to open it up for discussion again at our next budget meeting. Okay. Okay, so we can get a copy of that. Kevin, if you would go ahead and email that out uh, okay. to the council and the mayor. I'll do it. Same. And Elijah. Same with my Kevin. Okay. And if anybody else has a proposal on any rate changes or uh, with water, sewer, or garbage, please get them to Kevin to send out to the council prior to, to our next uh, budget meeting. Okay. Thanks, Scott. Uh, old business, we're going to, uh, to discuss the current golf cart ordinance. Uh, I'm not sure I know how they got Who put that on the agenda? I didn't know. Uh, the Eliza. Um, I would just like for us to review the golf cart ordinance. Uh, I know that there's several people that uh, in town that actually have golf carts. Um, and the way it currently states, uh, you can operate a, a golf cart or a utility vehicle uh, in the speed limit zones of 25 mile per hour or less. Um, you cannot be on a 35 mile an hour street or cross a 35 mile an hour street. Uh, with the events, did last year I didn't bring this up because we canceled most of the events. I think it would be a real asset for for our community to be, to be able to ride golf carts to our downtown events, especially since we're having several of them this year. Uh, we already have an ordinance in place. Um, the only the only difference would be would be to allow those golf carts on Main Street in 35 mile per hour zones. That's a state ordinance. Period. Yeah. Can you verify that for me? I, well, they did the ordinance. I yeah. checked. Virginia State Code says golf carts are not in 35. Yes, 25 or less. Yeah, we, Even with the slow moving vehicle trying. Yeah. See, Virginia Code defines two vehicles. They define a golf cart and they define a slow moving vehicle. So slow moving vehicle can, with proper placard, operate in the 35 zone. Like a tractor. Yes, but there's but they, they give a specific definition for a golf cart. So the code recognizes two, recognizes them as two different things. So the state code limits it to 25 miles an hour and let or less. Or less. Okay. So there's no way to get people to downtown with their golf carts if they live outside the 25 mile mile per hour zone safely. Mm -hmm. I guess. Yeah, can I do that for a? Can we, can we, can we do that for the festival? Unless we, unless we, unless we decide to have a parade that morning and load that in the parade route and have a golf cart parade that takes it up. One end of it, close it, close it. Can we do something similar for by event, Kevin? 
What do you say? I mean, you can close the street to traffic if you want to. Do. Well, we can't, well, we, we can't close all the lanes. Right, we can, we, we can uh, apply for a, a parade permit and have everybody that wants to take their golf cart meet at a certain time, and we'll have a parade from one area to the other and get them all down there. We'll take lunch. Hey, we'll get that one ass over there. I have a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> Good night, man. One of them. One of them. One of them. One of them. Can you send that code section uh, to Lyle's for me? I've probably got it right here. Oh, you got it? This Virginia code 46.2 100. I just didn't know. 46.2 100 is the definitions. So the code would actually be uh, 46.2.100 is just definitions. 46.2-915.1. Yeah. I just thought it'd be neat to have fans go ride golf carts downtown there during those uh, city days really? and whatnot. I know we've got several people to ask. Uh, but like myself, I live in a 25 mile per hour zone, but I have to hit an iron drive to get to downtown. And anybody from Wendy's on, yeah, top maybe of Wendy's you. on, and from here out would have to also. So if you live in historic downtown, you're okay, I guess. That's right. There you go. There you go, Ty. Make a motion to rent a golf cart for the mayor. No, no. Yeah. Everybody's going to go. Can I get a second? I'm like, no, no. Okay, anything else on that, Liza? No, sir. Okay. Do we have a motion to go into closed session for the purposes of discussing personnel? Uh, legal, please. And legal? I'll make that motion. Personnel will be discussed. Uh, part time employment? Uh, yes, comp uh, employee compensation as well, Mayor. Employment compensation, okay. See if we Brad made the motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Further discussion. All those in favor of the motion say aye. Aye. Opposed, same side. Political work here. Yes.